Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Uh, we're going to do part four of our uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever uh, review. And today we're going to be discussing the supporting cast. Brian, this movie was held up by the performances of some of the supporting cast. Um, once again, I, I'll have to quote Tracy on some of the characters. Let's go one by one by the characters. Um, Tracy, like you and I are going to agree that, um, M'Baku was yet again, a great supporting actor in this, uh, in this Black Panther film. My thing, Brian, and listen, he was he could have done more. They should have given him more. I think we discussed that uh, in our pri on a prior show. And he's he's when he's funny, he's funny. I don't want someone coming into the room and saying, "Give me more of that." Funny, and Baku being funny and goofy. That's what I'm afraid of. So I. Listen, we're not going to probably get a Black Panther 3 film in a, in quite some time, but the, the Wakanda series, I hope he has a large part to play. What were your thoughts on his uh, performance? Yeah, I think I think we're in lockstep here. Winston Duke was great. I think he was a little bit underutilized, uh, both in action. I, I thought his, like his conflict with Nemor was cool, but maybe too short i thought they would act when he attacked him i thought there was going to be actually some kind of duel or exchange and he takes one shot to the breastplate and he's he's down um <clears throat> so i i would have liked to have seen a little bit more of him in full action i think he's dominating high, yeah i mean i think he he has a little bit of it but you get the sense it was almost edited down in that in the flood of wakanda scene where he kind of jumps on the boat and he's kind of um, dealing with some of the the invaders from from Tawakan. I I think his high point actually is when he's not in joke mode and he's speaking to Shuri almost as like a mentor, yes, and a seer, and something I you know, where he says like I promised your brother I would do this. Yes, I, that that's to me the high point of the character. And, and again, I, I could have done with five more minutes or two or three more scenes of that. Yeah, because uh, it's not something he was really asked to do in the first film, and I think it's something he picked up very well in this film. I didn't mind the jokes. I'm with you. Like, I think they're probably right on the limit of what's tolerable for like any single movie. Yeah, but I didn't mind it because his delivery is really good. So I feel yes. like it, you know this. It didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like it was like. Oh, we've got to hit you with a joke. He he makes it seem He's, pretty good. Yeah, pretty he, his delivery is pretty good. M again, my only concern is for the future is that they try to get to uh what's the guy's name? Batista's character. What's his what's his name? Oh, Drax. Yeah. I, yeah. I hope they don't dumb him down in Baku because in Baku is well, a great character. And and I'm my my hope is that they again, someone coming into room into the room and saying give me more more funny from him well so that begs the question do you think the last scene of him is serious do you think that that is meant to signify he is in fact going to be the ruler of wakanda the next time we see wakanda does that I, what I was that so. a yeah it, i i did not interpret that as a joke i interpreted it as shuri unlike her brother prefers not to sit on the throne even if she is the black panther yeah. And M'Baku is the person she trusts and asks to take over the mantle. So that actually, eh. I mean, that kind of, I think, limits the silly, doesn't it? If he's yes, and I, and I'll say this: if you look back towards the first uh, Black Panther, how was the throne gained in battle, combat? Yeah, challenge, and he without. Well, he challenged and lost. Yeah. Yeah. So Shuri wasn't going to fight this dude without no herbs. You know what I'm saying? So that makes sense. Yeah. Right? So Angela Bassett. 
<laughs> Tracy says Angela Bassett portrayed the part exactly how a good director would want it to be played in the world event setup scenario. Brian, if she doesn't win an award for this, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't care who's up. Get them the nomination. That that'll give them. That'll bring more dollars to 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 their career. Yes, but give it to the person that is that truly deserves it. She's been and she's been a great actress forever. She just had some bad movies, but she's a great actress nonetheless. And she doesn't age at all. I, she at still all. look like she can fight somebody. They they <laughs> had her in like the sleeveless costume and like she's pretty jack i'm like she yeah. looks like she, I mean, if you had told me she was 35 or 38 i'd be like yeah okay other than yeah, the fact yeah, that they had yeah. the characters hair painted gray i was like you know look i mean everyone in hollywood has some work done on the face but you can't hide the body and like yeah she does not she's like 60 yeah. she looks amazing she it's looks absurd. amazing um brian i'm a little bit when i look back at that performance I'm upset, and I think I mentioned this before. I'm upset that they showed that or some of that in the trailer, especially the more um, grief-stricken uh, Ramona. And I'll tell you, when she told the general, get on your feet, <laughs> and she had to give up because she had that sick. You know, she she failed it once too many uh, too, too many times, and I thought that was a, a dope uh, scene. I think that scene should have been uh, revealed to us in the theaters rather than in trailers. But your thoughts on Angela Bassett? Yeah, look, I mean, amazing performance. You know, I think I think it should be worthy of a nomination. I. Well, I don't know if she'll get the nod for the win, but I, I think she was in the movie enough and certainly did more than enough with the scene she had to garner a nomination. As I said, I think she is the centerpiece of the first third of the movie. You know, the, the two monologues that the trailers gave you were in the first kind of section of the movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, her presence when she's talking to, I guess it's like the U, their equivalent of the UN. Um, I mean, just the power in that room, like nobody's messing with with her. Yeah. Um, and then later on when she's, yeah, when she's dealing with, you know, the loss of, at that point, what she thinks is her entire family, but then dealing with, you know, Okoye's cavalier attitude toward the mission, which backfires. Yeah. Uh, but then even, I, you know, I thought, one thing we got in this film that we really did not get in the last film, and it didn't really dawn on me until it happened, was because in the in the first film, T'Challa has already lost T'Chaka in Civil War. So there, the only father son you get is in the in the astral plane. You don't get yeah. it in real life, and they didn't have like a mother son casual scene in the film it didn't even dawn on me because like it all went to sure it was it was brother sister that's what you had and then in this film i like the scenes where she was kind of off duty and just being mom i thought yeah, those yeah. were powerful scenes where it's like oh we actually get to see her as a parent yeah. to shuri where she takes her to the you know sort of the i don't know what to call it there the, the, the pyre where they're going to burn the costumes and then the more appears and even when she just wanders into the lab and she's almost like I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I'm just kind of being my, I, I really like the contrast of like this woman yeah. who's like that face she puts to the world. And then that <laughs> softer side that she had, it was gut wrenching when I realized that she was actually dead in the movie. I, I, I was with the characters kind of being like, I don't believe she, they're actually taking her. I, I can't believe they wrote this in the script. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized that it was real, I was like, I felt really bad. Cause I was like, I, do we really not have, can we really not have this performance again? Like in, yeah, in yeah, the future, yeah. that felt like a shame. I mean, I realized yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the emotional choice of it, but man, it felt like a real, a real loss for the MCU, not just for the Wakanda universe. So yeah, no, I mean, I think 
she still wins my my power rankings for supporting characters. I think she mm-hmm. still holds the top spot. Um, and if this was her last, you know, real appearance in the MCU, uh, I like maybe she comes back in the astral plane. But this is if this is her last real appearance, then I mean, she went out, you know, went out like a boss. So yeah, even she, I, I believe, when she read the script, I read an article saying that she didn't want them to kill her off. Um, I believe it. Why yeah. would you want that? <laughs> like, yeah. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I'll tell you what, man. You, you do not want to be in the ruling family of Wakanda. That's a, <laughs> they, they they just go down like flies. I'm yeah. sorry, I had yeah. to call it. It's, it's, it's rough. <laughs> I understand why Shuri wants to get as far away from there as possible. So, um, Nakia, yeah, um, Tracy said added the intent and plan direction given by Chala upon his death. Some may call it cheating. I call it good writing. <laughs> Brian, I had told you, and I think I don't know if we'll get into it now, but I had told you a theory. And this theory was out quite some time ago. Around July was 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 when it first appeared. Uh, um, what's this guy's name from Instagram? I'm gonna give him a shout out because uh he's cool. Um superhero breakout. He told me he he sent me the text or or, or the rumor and that he left a son behind. And when I, they did a fantastic job of hiding. Brian, because I still didn't know. Even in the movie, I still didn't know if this was going to happen or not. But regardless of that, Naki, I think her performance was uh, seeing her speech all speak all these different type of languages. Um, I would have wished to see her stealth skill trying because, I mean, she just goes in there and then she appears in Namor's throne room. It's like... Yeah. How, how you get there you know what i'm saying tell me how you did that that's what i would have wanted to see but nonetheless i think her performance and her uh, uh i think um meaning be in this film was uh well thought out yours your your opinion um i was a little underwhelmed to be honest uh-huh. uh i think given the stature of lapita nyong'o as a you know academy award level actress i think quite honestly they struggled with where to slot her into this movie and i think when you get to the credit scene you kind of understand that maybe her role is more in the future than it was in this film because if i think about what made the character interesting as a foil for t'challa for t'challa and not just a romantic interest in the first film it was that idea that she's always a little bit of an outsider in her own country this idea Mm -hmm. that she was always of the belief that Wakanda should be engaged in outreach and should not be hiding behind its own walls and its technology. And that was a major theme of the first Mm -hmm. film. But Mm -hmm. this film didn't really carry that storyline forward, presumably in part because Chadwick Boseman had passed. So in, in essence, I think part of what made her character different ceased to be as important and therefore it felt like when they gave her that infiltration mission to Talacon, it was really just to get her in the movie. Yeah, yeah. And remind you that she was there. Yeah, yeah. It was only in the credit scene where there was a payoff to what she had said along the way, which is to Shuri, like, hey, when you're done, like, you have a place in Haiti and you don't understand what that comment really means mm-hmm. until you get to the credit <clears throat> scene. And that's why I was like, I left the movie feeling like, oh, she has more to do. But she took a back seat yeah. in this movie. And I just, like I said, I don't really know when I look back on it, I under, I, I kind of like don't really know where she could have done more. Like, I don't know what parts we could have swapped. There really isn't a lot of room for her in this, the, the choices they made here. So like I said, it's fine. Like I said, I, I'm very interested to see where it goes. My one concern, like I would almost say like, if we time jump, and the sun grows without us really seeing that process, that might marginalize her in the future. 
because it would seem like the role she has to play is really to be the mom to the future Black Panther. Yeah. And if we don't get to see that, then I don't know. That's I, the only thing I'm sort of like a little bit like TBD on how it's going to go for her. I mean, it'll be interesting to know what Wakanda, the Wakanda series on uh, Disney Plus is going to be. There's a rumor there's more than one. Okay. That's what at least one of the, I think it was Joe Robert Cole, the co-writer on this mentioned it in, in some of the promotion that like, that's why I said you should look at this as Wakanda forever one, because I do mm -hmm. think this has pivoted almost like a universe within a universe. And I think they want to do a lot of strands related to some of the characters or civilizations that are in this. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, Riri Williams. All right. Um, I wasn't again. She had her moments. They just, and I think we discussed it. They just gave her too much, and it wasn't. None of it was impactful. Um, having her smarts and not use her in an ability of helping Shuri with this equation to figure out the synthetic herb, I think was a missed opportunity. Um, again, I think we mentioned it before. Her suit was very underwhelming. That whole sequence was very underwhelming. And, and, and it, all that, that screaming like, woo -hoo! like we've seen it over and over again and it's meant to get the the, the crowd pumped but uh it did not do that at all for me brian um what did you think of riri williams um and, I, and i'll say let me see if i can uh quote tracy here regarding riri williams he said Riri Williams with that type of African-American black girl while being a stereo actually gets a response from the spe the a specific movie audience. Blame that part on Disney conducting demographics and audiences. I don't know if I will leave that in the, the video, but do you understand what he's talking about? So, yeah, I think there is. You got to break the perform. You got to break the performance into pieces. So I. I talked about this. We talked about this before this movie came out, before when we heard there was an Ironheart series. I think Dominique Thorne has a tough assignment here because I think the mass audience that ultimately you need to watch the show or watch the film is not going to be aware that Riri Williams is a comics accurate character. Mm. They are going to see, wait, this is the young, new, diverse version of Iron Man. That, and that's a tough, and given RDJ, this is what I mean, it's not RDJ's fault, but his shadow looms very large when you put a character in who clearly like, goes to MIT, has his genius, gets dressed up in a mechanized suit of the same color, and then goes around and does similar things like, you are inviting a comparison. And of those course. of us who, and, and, and like Riri Williams, even in the <laughs> comics timeline, is relatively new. This is like, you know, Tony Stark has been around for decades. Riri Williams is kind of like 10, 15 years. I mean, it's not even, it's, it's not really mm -hmm. that long that the character has been in the comics. So the comic readers are not going to be phased because they're looking for, okay, if I've read Iron Heart, I understand what this character is supposed to be in contrast to Tony Stark. But again, I'm just saying like someone off the street who just checks in for the big Marvel movie event. That's you have to sell them on these two being really distinct, interesting characters. So I do think Dominique Thorne succeeded. I said that in our over. She succeeded from a personality standpoint. Nobody's going to walk out of this movie and be like, oh, she's the young female version of Tony Stark. I don't think anyone's going to say that. Like she she has a personality that's distinct. From yeah. What a young Robert Downey Jr. would have acted like. Yeah. But I didn't buy the progression in this film. It, it just seems so unnecessary to me. I, I 
when I put when I when I grasped that like she was going to be the plot device, the scientist that they were pursuing, I kept as every time the movie went on, I kept finding myself just saying like, I'm fine with you having her be effectively a giant Easter egg in this film, but she doesn't need to do anything. Like you had, she has her own show. You, you you know, once you get a sense of her personality, she had a good sense of humor. She had good chemistry with Letitia Wright. That's all I really needed. I honestly didn't need to see her in a suit at all. If you wanted to just show me her doing a couple of super duper smart technical things as like a clue to like what's coming, great. I was shocked, honestly, in the final battle, although I sort of knew it was coming when we got this like fully realized Ironheart suit, which I didn't really like, quite honestly. Like it looked a little like it looked like a Power Ranger villain. I was gonna say like Transformers or even <clears throat> like like a poor man's Gundam warrior or something like that. It just didn't quite, and it didn't look anything like the Mark Three from like Iron Man One. That that it just it just didn't land for me. And then I yeah. feel like she was there to kind of zap Namor and take away his power. But it's like again, you had the Midnight Angels. They could have done the same thing. Like it just. You didn't need it and it just felt like you were forcing you're forcing too much iron heart too quickly and now yeah. i'm going to get to the pilot of her show and be like i don't what's care the challenge? <laughs> what's the challenge like you already have your suit you've already like you didn't go through real adversity to get it you you have the tech you got a you got a hotline to wakanda if you need help like i'm sure there'll be challenges but i'm like yeah. you know you're kind of starting with a i mean you know, Tony Stark. What is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, stay. Tony Stark got this in a cave, a pile of scraps. Like she didn't do anything like that. You know? No, exactly. Yeah. But that's the thing. They're giving people powers or these um, these skills. Like obviously she's smart, but they give her the suit like right away. I mean, it's like we don't see her when she becomes all that struggle. Why does she need to build this? What's her, you know what I'm saying? It's just in the first place. Why does she have yeah. that in the garage? Yeah, yeah. It's like she's just building it. And it's like, why though? Why? Why? Yeah. Um, so yeah, didn't really enjoy that character too much. She had her moments, Brian, but I I I I could have used a lot less. That easily would have saved you probably like what, 10 minutes, maybe five, six. Oh, at least I mean I think it's more than ten, and like I said, it would have it would have opened the door for some fun possibilities for whether it's a Koye or Mbaku. Like there were there were characters right there to do the action, um, and like I said, you still could have had her. You you still could have had her almost as a device for a running chase between you know between the Talokans and 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 the Wakandans without without doing this. So I just I don't know it it. Like I said, it felt to me like a lack of confidence in something. Like it was either a lack of confidence in the existing <clears throat> lineup from Black Panther to be the hero of this movie, mm. a lack of confidence in the Ironheart show to where they felt like they had to give you more of that now before you see it, or a combination of both. But either way, it just felt like they weren't on sure footing. And I think what we got bogged down this movie more than it helped it. I it could be what you said in our last conversation Ryan that you know probably Kugler didn't have a lot of this in there and Disney sort of further their agenda for it the feels future. like that to me it feels like that to me um what's her name the general well, Denai Guerrero. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Okoye Guerrero. Yeah, she, Brian. I liked. She's always great on screen. Yep. <laughs> um, when she when the when she fought the 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 blue dude who may be a, a foe for Submariner in the future, possibly. Um, that was intense, when, especially when she took that 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 bump. Oh. That was that was rough, <laughs> um, and her getting dismissed as a as a general uh, I, again. I hope that in the Wakanda Forever or the Wakanda series that 
that they do on Disney Plus follows these uh, these uh, these individuals. For example, Mbaku becoming king, uh, her Okoye be doing whatever it is. I don't know to get back to being a general. I don't know. Um, but what did you think of her performance? I like you said, she's always good. Um, she had an arc, like the character. The character, I liked it because the character did something different in this movie yeah. than the first one. I think we already knew she could fight. So we, you know, we got, we didn't need to have that reproven, but she obviously got her chance. We also know that, see, I like her sense of humor too. Cause again, mm-hmm. like when she says that thing about the like Wakandan village school, I thought that was pretty funny about <laughs> MIT. <laughs> but, but she delivers it very smoothly. It's not like a, hey, look at me, I'm about to make a joke. She just kind of mm-hmm. says it deadpan. So I like that. Uh, I like the emotion. Like when she loses her post, you can see what that means to the character. But then she gets her redemption arc with the Midnight Angels armor. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it, yeah, and she has that rivalry with the one warrior from Talokan, which was quite cool that they kept that going. I think it's Atuma is yeah. the name of the, the, the big the big guy in blue that she fights. Uh, and you can tell there's like a grudging like <clears throat> respect there, even as there's like a code almost as they're they're going about it. So yeah, I thought this was I thought this was a a good vehicle and a good performance for her. I mean, I think I'm glad they gave her as much. That's that's a character that I would have expected to have more screen time in Chadwick mm-hmm. Boseman's passing, and and she did. So I would say like you know, is it an A plus performance? I don't know. Like it, it really didn't have that potential, but it's like you know, B plus A minus did everything that needed to be done. Yeah, absolutely, good job. They can keep keep bringing her back. I'll never get tired of having her. In, in, in yeah. The- um, were there any other individuals that we missed, Brian? So, well, there's a few like little ones. I did want to ask you one other thing about Okoye, though. The Midnight mm-hmm. Angels thing. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about it? Because I did have this moment of like, <clears throat> exactly how many characters are going to get the heads up display? Like, right? It was like, okay, Iron Man, Iron Heart, now Midnight Angels. Like, I mean, is everyone going to be in a cockpit? looking at a screen as they fight this is this is when you have individuals in suits i think this is where you have to sort of a, somewhat differentiate or innovate a little bit so that is not the same thing over and over again i thought that was a mistake <clears throat> to give her a heads up display and then show us a scene and be like well we've seen this so many times before like make this armor which looks kind of different yeah act different like, exactly yeah. exactly um but l- l- let's see what they do i mean there's a, again there's a lot of possibilities with these series that they're going to do on disney plus so we don't know but um anything else brian before we wrap up yeah so little characters i just wanted to ask you about which mm-hmm. almost felt like maybe something changed or got left on the cutting room floor so Michaela Cole, why was she in this movie? So as Anika, remember there was a rumor way back when she was going to be Storm. That never came yeah. to be. Yeah. But considering that she's a pretty name actress at this point, her part seemed pretty, pretty. small. Like, oh, like yeah. it just she and and it also like very uneven. Like when they have her in the first fight and they go out of her way to say like she's fighting with different weapons. I'm like, yeah. okay, they're they're kind of setting something up here. And then it was like, where does she go? And then all of a sudden, at the end, she pops back up as a second Midnight Angel. I'm like, did yeah. I miss something in between? Here? Like, it, what was the point? Of the, and where's this the... going? Like, yeah, I don't know yeah. what this character can become. That's like, that would make me understand why she signed up to do it. If that makes sense. Was she just there for that last scene? I don't know. And just want to be a part of Marvel in some way. Wow, maybe that's the got to got to get my bag and get in the universe. <laughs> she just seems too good for that. As, yeah, as, yeah. As this point. That's the thing. I, so I was a little confused. I didn't understand it. Um, AO, who's the other sort of notable um, that's been around since Civil War. I, I just at this point, I feel like they're using her kind of in like she is going to be the the supporting role. Um, third or fourth build warrior and kind of she pops up obviously in like what falcon winter soldier season briefly so 
I guess that's just what what her role is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I didn't. And then obviously the other other one that I teased was the whole Lake Wise Lake Bell in this movie because that feels like something that got edited out. And yeah, I think it. Like I said, I think it ties back to I believe Doom was in this movie at some point and was taken out. So, and we will talk about that coming up next. <laughs>